High Commander Varric stood at the helm of the Eternal Dominion, his flagship's name reflecting the Empire's unshaken belief in their own supremacy. His four-fingered hands were clasped behind his back as he gazed through the panoramic view screen at what he considered to be the most laughable excuse for resistance he had encountered in his three centuries of military service. A human mining colony. Fifty battle cruisers for this? Commander Krell's voice carried that distinctive chirping undertone that indicated barely suppressed amusement. My lord, with all due respect, isn't this rather like using a plasma cannon to eliminate a space rat? Varric's secondary hearts pulsed with irritation. Need I remind you, Commander, that these humans have refused to pay their protection fees for the third consecutive cycle? He pronounced the word humans as if it left a bad taste in his primary mouth. The High Council demands we make an example of them. The mining colony hung suspended against the backdrop of stars, a collection of utilitarian structures and processing facilities that somehow managed to look both primitive and surprisingly well-maintained. Their scans showed a population of merely 3,000 humans, most of them industrial workers and support staff. Besides, Varix continued, his facial ridges rippling in what passed for a smirk among his species. After we're done here, no other colony in the sector will dare to withhold payment. The Crimson Guard has never failed a mission. Commander Krell activated the tactical display, and a holographic representation of their fleet materialized in the command center. Fifty red dots surrounded the single blue dot representing the mining colony. The warriors are prepared for deployment, my lord, though I must say their enthusiasm is somewhat diminished. They feel this assignment is beneath their status. Remind them that even the most trivial demonstration of imperial might requires absolute perfection. Varric's voice boomed across the command deck, causing several junior officers to flinch at their stations. Now, open a channel to the colony. Let's give these humans one last chance to reconsider their foolishness. The communications officer, Lieutenant Nexus, pressed several geometric patterns on his console. After a moment, he turned all three of his eye stalks toward Varric's. My lord, they're, they're responding with an audio transmission only. How primitive, Varric sneered. Put it through! A voice crackled through the ship's speakers, accompanied by what sounded like metal striking metal in the background. Yeah, this is Sarah from Maintenance. If you're calling about the protection fees, I've got a work order here that says your ships failed their last 17 safety inspections. We can't process any payments until you bring your fleet up to code. Varix's primary heart nearly stopped. What? This is High Commander Varix of the Imperial Fleet. You dare to? Look, the human interrupted, sounding distinctly unimpressed. I've got three pressure regulators to replace in a fusion core that's making funny noises. Either bring your ships up to code or stop cluttering up my shipping lanes with all your poorly maintained junk. Sarah out. The transmission cut off, leaving the command deck in stunned silence. Varric's scales had turned an interesting shade of purple. Deploy. The. Guard. Each word came out as a separate sentence, dripping with carefully controlled rage. I want that colony dismantled piece by piece. And find this one, so Sarah, I want to see the fear in her eyes when she realizes exactly who she just dismissed. As the Crimson Guard's dropships began launching from the hangars, Lieutenant Nexus noticed something odd on his scanner. My lord... I'm detecting some unusual energy readings from the colony. They appear to be running diagnostics on our ships. Impossible, Varix waved a dismissive hand. Their primitive technology couldn't possibly interface with our systems. Begin the assault. Let's show these humans what happens when they mistake Imperial might for a maintenance inspection. If only High Commander Varix had paid attention to those anomalous readings. If only he had wondered why the humans sounded more annoyed than afraid. If only he had checked his own ship's maintenance logs. But he didn't, and that was about to become the biggest mistake of his military career. The deployment of the Crimson Guard was meant to be a spectacular display of imperial might. Three hundred of the Empire's finest warriors, their crimson armor gleaming in the artificial light of the landing bay, marched with perfect precision into their dropships. Each soldier stood over eight feet tall, armed with weapons that could reduce planets to ash, trained in combat techniques perfected over 10,000 years of imperial conquest. 
Commander Krell watched the first wave of dropships launch from the safety of the command deck. Witness true power, he chirped smugly to a junior officer. The Crimson Guard's dropships are engineering marvels. Their shield generators alone cost more than an entire human city. Those primitive miners won't even have time to... A loud clang interrupted his boasting, followed by the distinctly concerning sound of grinding metal. On the main display, one of the dropships suddenly tilted at an awkward angle. Then another. And another. Sir? Lieutenant Nexus's eye stalks were twisted in confusion. I'm receiving multiple automated distress signals. The dropships are reporting simultaneous catastrophic maintenance failures? The command deck watched in horror as the first dropship's engines sputtered and died. The mighty vessel, pride of the Imperial fleet, dropped from the sky with all the grace of an intoxicated space whale. It crashed into one of the colony's empty landing pads, its advanced armor plating doing nothing to prevent it from bouncing like a child's toy. I don't understand, Varric snarled, his scales now cycling through various shades of purple and green. Those ships underwent rigorous inspections before deployment. Through the chaos of emergency signals and panicked communications, a familiar voice crackled over the general frequency, accompanied by a rhythmic, metallic tapping. Oh, hey there, Sarah from maintenance again. Just wanted to let you know I found some serious safety violations in your dropships. Had to disable them before someone got hurt. The good news is I've already started the repairs. The sound of cheerful humming filled the command frequency, punctuated by the steady clang, clang, clang of what could only be a wrench against metal. In the background that they could hear the distinctive thud of more dropships making unauthorized landings. How, how is she doing this? Commander Krell's professional composure had completely evaporated. Our systems are protected by the most sophisticated encryption in known space. Another voice joined the comm channel, this one belonging to a very distressed Crimson Guard captain. My lord, the human, she's, she's leaving notes. Actual physical papers stuck to our hulls. They read, maintenance violation, failure to properly secure antimatter containment leads to immediate grounding of vehicle. Please see attached 503-page report for detailed explanation of infractions. She's, she's color-coded the violations, my lord. The humming grew louder. Several officers on the command deck recognized the tune, an ancient human song about biting dust, whatever that meant. The steady clang, clang, clang continued its cheerful rhythm, a counterpoint to the increasingly panicked reports flooding in from the Crimson Guard. Sir, she's reorganizing our equipment storage. Everything's being labeled and categorized. The human is installing safety railings. We can't stop her. She's updating our maintenance logs with stickers. High Commander Variks gripped the command rail so hard his armored gauntlets left permanent impressions in the metal. Launch the second wave, and somebody find out how one human maintenance worker is bypassing our security protocols. Lieutenant Nexus's voice quivered as he reported, My lord, the second wave. They're refusing to launch. The pilots are demanding to see current safety certificates and maintenance records. They're citing Imperial Regulation 47B, subsection 12. No Imperial vessel may deploy without up-to-date documentation of all required safety protocols. The humming stopped. Sarah's voice returned to the channel, sounding distinctly pleased with herself. Now you're getting it. Safety first, invasion second. Don't worry, though. I've already filed the paperwork to expedite your inspection process. Should only take six to eight weeks, assuming you pass the first round. Oh, and you might want to check your flagship's port side stabilizers. That rattling noise isn't supposed to happen. As if on cue, the Eternal Dominion shuddered ominously. High Commander Varix, ten-time recipient of the Empire's highest military honors, destroyer of worlds, scourge of seventeen star systems, did something he had never done in his centuries-long career. He whimpered. The security feed from Dropship 7 crackled to life on the command deck's main screen, and for several long moments, not a single Imperial officer made a sound. They watched, transfixed, as a human female strolled through their most sophisticated security system as if she were taking a pleasant walk in a garden. She wore dark blue coveralls stained with various mechanical fluids, a tool belt that seemed to contain an impossible number of pockets, and heavy-duty work boots that left greasy footprints on the previously immaculate deck plating. 
Her graying hair was pulled back in a practical bun, and perched on her nose were safety glasses that had clearly seen better days. But it was the wrench she carried that drew everyone's attention, a massive piece of engineering that looked like it could adjust the orbit of a small moon. Approaching unidentified human, came the voice of guard Captain Malax over the security feed, engaging with maximum force. Sarah, for her part, didn't even look up from the data pad she was consulting. She simply sidestepped the captain's charge, stuck out her wrench at exactly the right height, and sent him sprawling. Sorry about that, but you're in a no-running zone. I've got it marked clearly with yellow safety tape. The entire command deck watched as she helped the stunned captain to his feet, dusted off his armor, and proceeded to give him a 10-minute lecture on proper safety protocols in confined spaces. She even issued him a citation. My lord, Commander Krell's voice had risen several octaves. She's, she's reached the main weapons array. On screen, Sarah was whistling, another one bites the dust, while methodically dismantling a planet killer cannon. Her movements were precise, efficient, and terrifyingly competent. Every few minutes, she would stop to make notes on her data pad or apply a new warning label to something. This targeting system is way out of alignment, she muttered, loud enough for the security feed to pick up. No wonder you boys can't hit anything smaller than a continent. And don't even get me started on these power couplings. Who certified this work? A squad of Crimson Guard warriors surrounded her, their plasma rifles charged and ready. Sarah looked up from her work, pushed her safety glasses higher on her nose, and sighed the sigh of someone who has dealt with far too many people who don't understand basic workplace safety. Now, fellas, she said, reaching into one of her many pockets, I'm going to have to see your permits for those weapons. The energy output on those plasma rifles is way above regulation limits for indoor use. She pulled out a thick manual titled Imperial Safety Standards and You, a comprehensive guide to not blowing yourself up. The guards looked at each other uncertainly. One of them lowered his weapon slightly. We, we don't have permits. No permits? Sarah clicked her tongue disapprovingly. That's going to be a class three violation. I'll need to confiscate these until you complete the proper certification course. Don't worry, though. I'm certified to teach it. We can start right now with Chapter 1, Basic Plasma Containment and You. High Commander Varix watched in growing horror as his elite warriors, trained to resist the most sophisticated psychological warfare, sat down cross-legged on the deck plating and began taking notes as Sarah launched into a detailed lecture about proper plasma rifle maintenance. Lieutenant, Varix croaked, Magnify her identification badge. The image zoomed in on the simple name tag pinned to her coveralls. Sarah Connor, lead maintenance engineer. Safety first, because paperwork last. Sir? Commander Krell had developed a nervous tick in his left eye stalk. Our records show she's worked at this colony for 27 years. Her personnel file is impressive. 17 commendations for improving efficiency, 12 patents for equipment modifications, and, oh no. What is it? Varix demanded. She once filed a 3,000-page complaint about Imperial ships leaving debris in her shipping lanes. With appendices and spreadsheets, the woman color codes her tax returns. On screen, Sarah had finished her impromptu safety lecture and was now demonstrating proper wrench technique to her attentive audience of elite warriors. Remember, she was saying, clockwise righty, counterclockwise lefty. We'll have pop quiz on this later. The situation aboard the Eternal Dominion had devolved into something unprecedented in the Empire's 10,000-year history. High Commander Varric stood in the center of his command deck, watching in mute horror as reports flooded in from across his fleet. His mighty armada, pride of the Imperial Navy, was being systematically dismantled by a single human with a wrench. Battlecruiser Infinite Might reporting critical systems failure. Lieutenant Nexus announced, his eye stalks drooping with fatigue. They found a note stuck to their main reactor. It reads, coolant system desperately needed cleaning. Fixed now. By the way, whoever installed these power converters did it backward. I corrected that too. You're welcome. P.S. Please reference page 394 of the maintenance manual for proper installation procedures. Commander Krell, who hadn't stopped twitching for the past hour, pulled up another report. 
The dreadnought Stellar Devastator is organizing mandatory safety seminars. Their entire crew is sitting in the mess hall, watching presentations about proper lifting techniques and workplace ergonomics. Sir, a junior communications officer called out, Battle Group 7 reports their weapon systems are, are being upgraded. The human left a note saying their targeting computers were running an outdated operating system, so she installed the latest patch and optimized their power consumption. Varric slumped in his command chair, his mighty frame seeming to shrink. How? How is she everywhere at once? The answer came from their internal security feeds. Sarah had apparently discovered the maintenance access tunnels that ran through the Imperial ships, passages that even their own engineers had forgotten existed. She moved through these passages like a ghost, emerging exactly where she needed to be, armed with her wrench and an apparently bottomless supply of sticky notes. Cruiser Unstoppable Force reports complete shutdown, another officer announced. They found their entire engine room reorganized and alphabetized. There's a note. Your tool storage was a nightmare. I've implemented a new organizational system. Blue labels for hydraulics, red for electronics, green for life support. Also, your antimatter containment was leaking. Fixed it. You're welcome. P.S. Your warranty is now void. The reports kept coming each more devastating than the last. The Crimson Blade reports their entire weapons array has been converted into a recycling system. The Starhammer found their bridge completely reorganized for optimal workflow efficiency. The Void Reavers crew is attending a workshop on sustainable energy practices. But perhaps most terrifying were the maintenance logs. Sarah was documenting everything, filing reports so detailed and thorough that they brought tears to the eyes of Imperial bureaucrats. Every violation, every patch, every upgrade was noted, categorized, and cross-referenced. She was creating a paper trail that would haunt the Empire's administrative offices for decades. A new transmission crackled across the command frequency. Hey there, Sarah again. Just wanted to let you know I've started a fleet-wide maintenance database. I'm noting down all these fixes so you can maintain them properly going forward. Also, whoever designed your life support systems really needs to attend my advanced engineering seminar. The way you're recycling air is just embarrassing. Commander Krell had begun stress molting, his scales littering the deck. My lord, the warriors, they're starting to ask questions about proper maintenance procedures, about safety protocols. Some of them are, are requesting copies of the Imperial Safety Standards Manual. The human has corrupted them. Varix whispered hoarsely, with competence and organization. Another sticky note materialized on the command deck's main console, seemingly out of nowhere. Your targeting computer's processing core was running hot. I installed some better thermal paste and upgraded the cooling system. Should work much better now. Also, you might want to update your security protocols. They're about three versions behind. Don't worry, I left detailed instructions. They're color-coded. The sound of humming echoed through the ship's corridors, accompanied by the now familiar clang of wrench against metal. The mighty warriors of the Crimson Guard, terror of a thousand worlds, found themselves checking around corners not for enemies, but for safety violations that might draw the attention of the dreaded maintenance engineer. Sir? Lieutenant Nexus's voice quivered. Fleet-wide reports indicate that overall system efficiency has improved by 47% since the human began her, her modifications. The bureaucrats at Imperial Command are, they're requesting her consultation fees. Varric stared at the latest sticky note on his console, its cheerful yellow color somehow more terrifying than any weapon he had ever faced. Your command chair's lumbar support is terrible. No wonder you're so grumpy. I adjusted it. Your posture should be much better now. Remember, a comfortable commander is an effective commander. P.S. We really need to talk about your filing system. The humming grew closer. The clanging grew louder. And somewhere in the vast expanse of space, the gods of bureaucracy smiled. Lieutenant Nexus was having the worst day of his career. As the communications officer of the Imperial flagship, it was his job to monitor all transmissions across the fleet. Right now, he was listening to a conversation that made his primary stomach churn with dread. Look, I tried being nice about this. Sarah's voice came through crystal clear on an intercepted channel. 
She was apparently speaking to someone at the mining colony while continuing her systematic reorganization of the Imperial fleet. I filed the proper complaints. I submitted the maintenance reports. I even sent them a strongly worded letter about proper debris disposal protocols. The sound of a wrench tightening something echoed through the transmission. But no, they kept dumping their broken parts in my shipping lanes. Do you have any idea how many transport schedules I've had to adjust because some Imperial hotshot couldn't be bothered to properly dispose of their burnt-out plasma coils? High Commander Varix leaned forward in his ergonomically adjusted command chair, his scales paling to an almost translucent shade. She's not... she's not even military? Another voice joined the transmission, an older human male who sounded both amused and exasperated. Sarah, when I hired you 27 years ago, I didn't expect you to declare war on the Imperial fleet over improper waste management. War? Oh no, Director Thompson. This isn't war. The cheerful sound of metal striking metal punctuated her words. This is a routine safety inspection, which they are catastrophically failing, by the way. Would you believe they were running their antimatter containment systems at 127% capacity? That's not just against regulations. It's against the laws of physics. Commander Krell, who had been stress-eating comfort rations, choked on his nutrient paste. The most devastating attack on Imperial forces in centuries is being carried out by an angry maintenance worker. And another thing, Sarah continued, her voice rising with professional indignation. Their organizational system is a nightmare. Who stores volatile plasma regulators next to the coffee maker? I had to spend three hours just reorganizing their storage closets. And their filing system? Don't even get me started on their filing system. The transmission picked up the sound of papers being shuffled. I've got 27 maintenance requests here, dating back three years, all asking them to please stop dropping their garbage in our transport routes. 27, all filed in triplicate, all with the proper forms attached, all sent through the official channels. Did they respond? No. So your solution was to hijack their fleet and force them to comply with safety regulations? Director Thompson sounded like he was trying very hard not to laugh. Someone had to do it. Have you seen their maintenance logs? The last time this flagship had a proper inspection was during the last galactic alignment. That's not just negligent, that's, that's personally offensive. A new voice joined the transmission one of the Crimson Guard captains. Excuse me, Miss Connor. We finished the workplace safety training you assigned and, well, we had some questions about the proper calibration of plasma rifle safety switches. Oh, wonderful. You're taking an interest in proper equipment maintenance. Hold on, Director. I need to handle this. Teaching moment, the transmission caught Sarah's voice shifting into what could only be described as enthusiastic instructor mode. Now everyone take out your manuals and turn to Chapter 7. On the command deck of the Eternal Dominion, High Commander Varix had stopped issuing orders. He sat in his newly adjusted chair, staring into space, occasionally mumbling something about proper documentation and filing protocols. Sir, Lieutenant Nexus ventured carefully, should we, should we arrest her? Commander Krell let out a slightly hysterical laugh. Arrest her? For what? Being too competent, she's filed more paperwork in the last six hours than our entire administrative division has in the past decade. It's all perfectly documented, regulation compliant, and worst of all, helpful. The transmission crackled again. Oh, by the way, Sarah's voice carried that particular tone of someone who has just remembered something important. I'm sending my consultation bill to Imperial Accounting. Standard rates for emergency maintenance plus overtime, holiday pay, Today's a Thursday, that's time and a half, and hazard pay for having to deal with the most egregiously mismanaged fleet I've ever seen. Director Thompson's sigh was audible even through the static. Sarah, did you just build the Empire? Of course I did. I'm not doing all this organizing for free. Besides, I itemized everything. It's all properly documented. Commander Krell turned to his superior, his eye stalks drooping in defeat. My lord, I believe we just got charged for our own invasion. High Commander Varix marched through the corridors of his flagship, surrounded by his most elite personal guard. Their boots thundered against the deck plating, which had been recently polished to a mirror shine. 
Someone had even put up helpful directional signs with arrows pointing toward key locations. The signs were laminated. The human has been cornered in main engineering, Captain Dren of the Personal Guard reported, his ceremonial armor gleaming under the newly installed energy-efficient lighting. Though, sir, she doesn't exactly seem concerned about being cornered. The closer they got to engineering, the more changes they noticed. The corridors were immaculate. Tool racks lined the walls, each implement perfectly aligned and clearly labeled. Safety procedures were posted at regular intervals, protected by plastic sheets and accompanied by helpful diagrams. They found Sarah in the heart of the engine room, surrounded by what had once been their most advanced technological systems. Every component had been disassembled, cleaned, and organized into neat piles. Each pile had its own label, inventory list, and maintenance log. Oh, good, you're here. Sarah looked up from the reactor core she was adjusting, pushing her safety glasses up with one greasy hand. I was hoping to talk to someone in charge about your maintenance schedules. They're atrocious. Did you know your quantum flux regulator hasn't been calibrated since the last emperor was in diapers? Varix drew himself up to his full height, his ceremonial armor glinting under the newly installed workshop lighting. Sarah Connor, you have single-handedly crippled the most powerful fleet in the galaxy, demoralized our finest warriors, and worst of all, reorganized our filing system. Someone had to do it, Sarah replied, casually tightening a bolt on the reactor. Your organizational system was a nightmare. Who taught you to file maintenance requests under things to ignore until they explode? That's not even proper alphabetical order. The personal guard raised their weapons. Sarah just sighed, reached into one of her many pockets, and pulled out a thick manual. Page 394, paragraph 3. Energy weapons are strictly prohibited within 50 feet of exposed reactor components. Really, we just covered this in the safety seminar. Did none of you take notes? Several guards shuffled their feet uncomfortably. One raised his hand. I took notes, but I had a question about the proper procedure for... Not now, Kevin, Varick snapped. Then he paused. Wait, your name isn't Kevin. It is now, Sarah interjected. I helped him fill out the name change forms. The poor guy's original name was impossible to pronounce without a secondary speech organ, and it was causing all sorts of confusion during safety roll calls. Varix felt a headache building in all three of his brains. You are our prisoner now. Surrender your, your wrench and cease this madness. Sarah held up one finger in the universal gesture for wait a moment, finished tightening something inside the reactor housing, then turned to face them fully. She planted her wrench on the deck like a staff of office, the overhead lights casting her oil-stained coveralls in a strangely heroic light. Look, she said in the patient tone of someone explaining basic concepts to management. Your ships are a mess. Your maintenance logs are a disaster. Your safety protocols are literally from the last century. I'm not trying to destroy your fleet. I'm trying to save it from your own negligence. She reached into another pocket and pulled out a data pad. I've drafted a comprehensive maintenance schedule for the entire fleet, color-coded, cross-referenced, with convenient reminder notifications. I've also developed a new inventory management system, standardized safety protocols, and outlined a proper waste disposal procedure that doesn't involve dumping space junk in my shipping lanes. But, but we're the Empire, Varix protested weakly. We conquer worlds. We don't attend safety seminars. Well, that explains why your conquest efficiency ratings are down 23% from last quarter. Sarah picked up another data pad. I did some analytics while I was upgrading your systems. Would you like to see the spreadsheets? I made graphs with trending lines. The personal guard began to lower their weapons, looking interested despite themselves. Kevin, formerly known as Grand Warrior Jekka Kex, was already taking notes. I, what, how? Varick sputtered his mighty frame seeming to deflate. What do you want from us? Sarah's eyes gleamed with the fervor of someone who had finally gotten management's attention. I want you to implement proper maintenance schedules. I want you to follow safety protocols. I want you to dispose of your waste properly and stop leaving debris in my shipping lanes. And most importantly, she reached into yet another pocket and pulled out a stack of forms. I want you to sign off on these equipment requisitions. 
Your engineers need proper tools, not these bargain basement plasma cutters you've been issuing them. How do you expect anyone to maintain a quantum drive with substandard equipment? Varix stared at the forms. They were perfect. The formatting was immaculate. The appendices were properly cross-referenced. There were even little tabs marking where he needed to sign. If I sign these, he said slowly, will you stop reorganizing everything? Sarah smiled. It was the smile of someone who knew they had already won. I'll stop reorganizing when everything is properly organized. Now about those maintenance schedules, I've prepared a presentation. Who's ready to learn about proper antimatter containment protocols? The personal guard, elite warriors of the empire, terror of a thousand worlds, immediately sat down cross-legged on the deck. Several of them already had their note-taking materials ready. Varix looked at his warriors, at his expertly organized engine room, at the stack of perfect paperwork, and made a decision that would change the course of imperial history. He sat down and took out a pen. Start with the quantum flux regulators, he said, trying to maintain some dignity. And could I get a copy of those spreadsheets? Six months after the failed invasion of a small mining colony, High Commander Varric stood before the Imperial Council, delivering his quarterly fleet performance report. The Council Chamber, normally a place of martial pomp and ceremony, now resembled something closer to a corporate boardroom. Someone had even installed a projection screen for PowerPoint presentations. And as you can see from these efficiency metrics, Varix gestured to a perfectly formatted graph, fleet performance has increased by 300% since implementing the Connor Protocol for Systematic Maintenance and Organization. Fuel efficiency is up, workplace accidents are down, and our conquest success rate has improved dramatically, mainly because our ships actually work now. The council members nodded approvingly, several of them making notes in their newly standardized data pads. The sound of pages turning filled the chamber as they followed along in their copies of the infamous 500-page report that had started it all. The Complete Guide to Not Blowing Yourself Up in Space, a comprehensive manual for Imperial fleet maintenance, had become required reading for every officer in the Empire. Furthermore, Varix continued, clicking to the next slide, our administrative efficiency has increased by 457% since adopting Ms. Connor's filing system. The color coding alone has saved us thousands of work hours previously spent searching for lost documentation. A junior officer appeared at his side, carefully placing a steaming mug on his podium. The words, Galaxy's Most Improved Commander, were printed on its side. The mug had proper thermal insulation and safety warnings about hot liquid consumption in zero-gravity environments. And speaking of Miss Connor, Varix took a careful sip from his regulation-compliant mug. I believe she's joining us today via holoconference to present her latest proposals for fleet-wide improvements. The massive display screen flickered to life, revealing Sarah in her now-famous oil-stained coveralls. She appeared to be standing in some sort of maintenance bay surrounded by disassembled engine parts. Each part was, of course, meticulously labeled and organized. Hello, everyone, she waved cheerfully with her wrench. First, I want to congratulate you all on your improved safety ratings. Almost three months without a single antimatter containment breach. That's going on the Achievement Board. The council members beamed with pride. The Achievement Board had been another of Sarah's innovations a massive display in every ship showing days since the last workplace accident. It had sparked an almost fanatical competition between crews. Now, Sarah continued, pulling up her own slides, I've been reviewing the performance data from the fleet's new maintenance routines, and I've identified several areas where we can optimize further. Also, somebody still isn't properly sorting their recycling in the Delta Quadrant. We've talked about this. People? The council members quickly flipped to fresh pages in their notepads. In six months, Sarah's suggestions had transformed the Empire from a barely functioning bureaucratic nightmare into a model of organizational efficiency. Her consulting fees were astronomical, but even the most stringent accountants agreed she was worth every credit. And one more thing, Sarah added, her expression turning serious. I've noticed some of your conquest targets are still leaving debris in their shipping lanes after surrender. That's not acceptable. I've drafted a new imperial regulation requiring all conquered worlds to implement proper waste management protocols. 
I've attached the usual 500 pages of documentation, complete with color-coded tabs for easy reference. Varick smiled, remembering a time when he would have found such bureaucratic thoroughness maddening. Now he found it comforting. The Empire had changed, and surprisingly, it had changed for the better. Their ships ran smoothly, their crews were well-trained, and their filing system was the envy of the galaxy. Oh, and High Commander? Sarah's voice carried that tone that still made him nervous. Your flagship is due for its quarterly inspection next week. I'll be conducting it personally. I suggest you make sure your maintenance logs are up to date. You remember what happened last time. Varix involuntarily touched his command chair, remembering how she had adjusted its ergonomic settings without warning. His posture had improved dramatically, but still. Of course, Miss Connor, everything will be in perfect order. As the presentation continued, a junior counselor leaned over to his colleague and whispered, You know, I heard the Galactic Federation has been asking about our new efficiency protocols. Apparently, their ships keep breaking down mid-invasion. Sarah's voice cut through the whispers. Actually, I've got a meeting with their administrative division next month. Their filing system is even worse than yours was. Can you believe they don't even color code their maintenance requests? The council chambers filled with horrified gasps. The Empire had changed indeed.